Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right, people. So this weekend, we have Canelo Alvarez versus John Ryder. Now, this is going to be a difficult one in a sense of people will probably already know who I'm picking. And you're trying with these prediction videos to make a case for the other guy. You know, you normally do. Because normally when you're doing prediction videos on some of these big fights, you expect... You expect one guy normally more often than not to be the favorite, maybe the heavier favorite, but you also see a way in which the opponent can pull it out the back. You might not be picking them, but you can see how they could offset their opponent. With this fight, I mean, it's very difficult to see what John Ryder can actually do. When you go and you look at John Ryder, he's not a bad fighter. Under no stretch of the imagination is John Ryder a bad fighter. But when you look at him, you just think, how, what, what can he do? to be competitive, offset, and potentially beat Canelo Alvarez. And there's not really an awful lot that I can see that John Ryder can do. And, you know, going into this fight, to talk a little bit briefly about this fight, John Ryder is the mandatory for the BBO. I think he's the interim champion, if I'm not mistaken. I think he won that. Well, he won, so he won the mandatory position anyway, but I'm not sure if there was an interim title on the line against Zach Parker back in November last year. A fight in which Parker had to go and fight on BT Sport. He was comfy enough in that fight. Zach Parker called it after, I think, four rounds. So he was able to get this fight. Now, John Ryder is someone who... He's lost a couple of fights. He's five losses now. He hasn't lost a fight since, I believe, the Callum Smith fight, which is over three years ago now. It was November 2019. And... For my money, I felt John Ryder won that fight. I thought he won it you know, fairly comfortably now, to be fair. Um, the fact that the scorecards had Callum Smith win in that fight by a wide margin, shocking. I mean, I think one judge only gave John Ryder three rounds, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, that was just... The right was on the wall when John Ryder didn't stop Callum Smith. You kind of felt that that was inevitable. But if you look at throughout John Ryder's career, you know, obviously he started out at middleweight... Fought people like Billy Joe Saunders. Had a close fight with Billy Joe Saunders many, I think a decade ago now. Nearly a decade ago anyway. And, you know, came up short on the British scene, you know. I remember when he fought Nick Blackwell. I think that might have been... I think it might have been on the Kell Brook Jojo Dan undercard. It was on a Kell Brook show. And that was when I was kind of worried about John Ryder. Because with John Ryder, you saw a guy who had talent. But... He seemed to be one of these guys like a David Price who would snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Because in that fight against Nick Blackwell, it was a BS stoppage, to be fair. Howard Foster was the referee in that, so of course it was. But John Ryder was winning that fight so comfortably, so comfortably against Nick Blackwell early on. He just unraveled. He just unraveled throughout the midway, and then I think it was the seventh or eighth round where he got stopped. And he just kind of wondered, you know... Is John Ryder, because he has talent, you can see it in him, is he going to be one of these guys who, even at domestic level, when it gets tough, he just finds a way to capitulate? And, you know, he had, I think it was a close fight he had with Rocky Fielding, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm pretty sure, didn't he fight Rocky Fielding? I think he had, he might have even lost to Rocky Fielding, actually. But he was struggling, languishing at domestic level. Then, I want to say right about 17, 2017, he started getting some good wins together, started looking a bit more devastating and started slowly creeping up the rankings. I think he f might have even fought a Golden Boy card, might have even fought one of Kenno's undercards back in the day. And, you know, you started seeing him improve, improve, improve. Then he got the Callum Smith fight. It might have even been mandatory for Callum Smith actually as well with the WBA. I think he might have been. He should have won that fight. He should have got his hand raised that night. He didn't. And, you know, he had to move on but carried on winning, and then got this fight against Canelo. Now, obviously this fight is technically a man, well, it is a mandatory, but this is more so Canelo, by his own admission, wanting a slightly easier fight to come back from after his fight with Triple G last September. Now, Alvarez, it's a strange one, because with Canelo, 2016 to about, I want to say 2019, Pretty much post-Kovalev. That was probably Canelo 
in his absolute peak. His physical prime, his athletic prime, I think that was Canelo at peak. He would have been in his late 20s at the time, mid to late 20s. And that's when we saw Canelo really at his best. But that was back down at 150. Obviously, he fought Kovalev at 175. But realistically, 16, he was 155 pounds, 54 pounds actually for the Liam Smith fight. Went to middleweight and then kind of, you know, stayed at middleweight, unified with Danny Jacobs after beating Triple G, which probably was his best performance, career best, even though a lot of people, not myself, but a lot of people feel Triple G won the fight. And then he started kind of going between super middle, uh, 175. But since 2019, I think that Canelo, for some reason, when you look at his performances, yeah, he's been winning and beating good guys, but he doesn't seem to have the same energy about him. I mean, his punch output as he's gone up through the weights has slowed down quite dramatically. He's always been slow-footed, Canelo Alvarez. It's not as apparent at weights like 168 pounds as it was back down at 154 pounds. The reason why is because the guys he's fighting now up at the higher weights, they're not the quickest of feet either. So it's negating Canelo's slow foot because if you look at him against Erislandi Lara, who, you know, Lara, tremendous feet back then. I mean, it was apparent, Canelo's slow footedness. And, you know, when you're fighting 154 pound guys, more often than not, you know, they have quick feet. So if you're slow footed, it's going to be exasperated. It's not so much at this weight. But that's one thing Canelo definitely has. His punch output has been really poor. And I suspect that's the going up in weight. Because with Alvarez, just looking at some of the training he does, he does to me, it looks like he does a lot of work on building upper body strength and building muscle. Now that's all well and good, right? But if Canelo Alvarez, let's say his body is naturally designed to be 160 pounds, right? And he'd have to probably, well, he probably is doing this, but lifting a lot of weights or doing a lot of functional strength training to get up to 168 pounds, you know, because you might feel stronger. You might feel stronger early on, but when your body and your lungs are saying, hang on a minute, I'm carrying all this extra weight that my lungs are not designed to carry, now I'm getting tired. Now, when you fight the way Alvarez fights, he fights, Canelo is a very explosive fighter. He's a wicked combination puncher, tremendous combination puncher. But he goes for power in all his shots. He's very explosive. When you do fight like that, if you're missing, and even if you're hitting the guy, it's taking energy out of you. Whereas if you're someone who's more methodical, who's more heavy handed, you know, you can kind of set that pace and you're not really worrying too much about your gas tank. Whereas Alvarez, we've seen it a few times now, he's gassed a bit in fights. Against Triple G in the trilogy fight, you know, Canelo won it, you know, clearly, but he didn't, he never made you think, oh, wow, Canelo, look what Canelo was doing. It was almost like, I'm better than Triple G at this point in our careers. I've got more left in the tank. I'm just going to win this fight on the scorecards. I'm not going to step on it. I'm not going to push the action. I'm just going to do what I need to do. And that's basically what he did. And obviously he lost to Dimitri Bivol in a fight in which, you know, his stamina, again, amongst other things, let him down. Where am I going with this? What I would be doing if I was in Team Rider, I would be saying, look, we're not going to really, look, we're fighting in Canelo's home country. I don't know if it's in his home temple. We're fighting in his home country. It's his homecoming. First fight there in over a decade. He's the zone golden boy. You ain't going to get a nod. All right? You ain't going to get a nod. You're not going to knock him out. Canelo has a very good chin. All right? So you have to try and be as competitive as you can be. You have to try and win rounds, which is not going to be easy, but how are you going to do that with? If you just get into a boxing match with him, Canelo is the superior boxer. He's faster. The only thing Ryder has an advantage over is probably foot speed. What I would be saying to John Ryder is I would just try and set a pace. Try and fight when Canelo doesn't want to fight. So when Canelo is maybe up close with you, you're in a clinch, just try and keep working. Just try and keep working. If you have a free hand, keep working. Do what you need to do and try and set a pace that Canelo will have to respond to. All right, Because it, even if you are the home fighter, even if you are you know, probably getting looked after in a sense of, you know, she'll get favorable treatment from the judges. If you're getting outworked and it's noticeable and you're not really landing yourself or, you know, your punches maybe aren't, aren't as eye-catching, it's still going to be difficult, but the judges will have to recognize that. So maybe that will be Ryder's chance. It would also be wise to go to Alvarez's body, you know, because not many people tend to go down there. 
And if you're a fighter who's struggling with your stamina, the last thing you want to do is have some guy hitting you in the body consistently, repeatedly, because it's going to tire you out, all right? So there are two things that Ryder could do. For Alvarez, I really, like, I worry that Ryder is going to come like a Callum Smith rather than a Liam Smith. What I mean by that is, I worry Will Ryder, because he's already kind of talked about it, you know, having one foot out the door. And I'm a bit worried that he'll turn up and just say, right, a moral victory, 12 rounds with Alvarez, moral victory. You know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to try and win this fight. Moral victory survive, a bit like Cam Smith. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope John Ryder decides, right, he's the better fighter, but I'm still going to try my best to go in here and win. I hope he does that. I really, really do, because I'm going to do a watch along for this fight. And I sure as hell don't want to be staying up till what, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning, seeing one guy try and survive and one guy press the action. Do not want to be doing that. Really don't want to be doing that. So I hope to God... Ryder puts his foot on the gas and tries to make something to this fight. What do I think will happen? I'm the eternal optimist and I'm going to say Ryder is going to come to win. He is going to try and trade fire with fire. He's going to want to try and take Alvarez's head off. In the process, he is going to get countered to death. Probably stopped by body punches. I'm going to say between round 6 to 10. In around those rounds. I think the first couple of rounds might even be competitive. In fact, the first couple of rounds, you know, Canelo, unless like you really are obscure, you know, you can have some success against Alvarez early on. You know, sometimes he can take a bit of time to warm into a fight. But I, I think the first few rounds are going to be competitive. But once Canelo starts finding his mojo, yeah, it's going to be... Ryder's going to have problems, I think. And... You know, it'll be interesting to see what he does after here. Be interesting to see what Canelo does because we he's talked about Bivol. Will we get the Bivol rematch? That I do not know. You know, talking about having a 168, I don't think that'd make really any difference. Benavidez potentially is out there, you know. I'm I'm I wouldn't be shocked at all, right? I would not be shocked if Alvarez wins this fight, which I think we're all picking him to, I certainly am. And maybe has a look at Badu Jack. Maybe has a look at fighting Badu Jack in the Middle East. Because he could get some serious money over there. Five division world champion. Badu Jack is the weak link of cruiserweight. And you know Badu Jack himself is not a particularly big cruiserweight. They could easily do that fight at 190 pounds. And Badu Jack wouldn't be weight drained at all in my opinion. Because realistically yeah, he's a big guy. He's bigger than. Probably too big for light heavy. But not a particularly big cruiserweight. Not a particularly big one. So that's what I think Canelo will do after. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you give John Ryder a semblance of a chance? I mean, for me, a snowball has a better chance surviving a day in hell than John Ryder does beating Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion. But, that's my opinion, and I could be proven completely wrong. Come what Saturday night? I don't think I will be, but you never know. Is there anyone who is thinking, no, gee, John Ryder can do this? Let me know in the comment section below if you think you can. And I'd be interested to see and hear why. Let me know your thoughts. I'll leave you with that, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. For now, lads and lassies, I'll leave you with that. Peace.